Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I'm gonna showcase a quick setup of a AI agent built with long graph. So that's Python, and connecting it to OpenAI. So the general idea of what I want to showcase today is just very quickly go through the base concepts of an AI agent, show the code of how it actually is set up, and showcase how it works. So get a general understanding. And I thought it would be interesting to kind of build something for real to so actually showcase these concepts. So I have built a small startup or like a website Raider, which then goes through a process of just the general overview first. You call an endpoint, you then pass that endpoint a URL. It then fetches that website and passes it to an LM to get some basic information in like a first step. It then goes to a decision step, which determines do we have enough information currently to be able to rate and understand this startup, this website, whatever. It then either sends it to a step that thinks more and provides more insights, and then back to the decision. It then once again determines, can we now conclude on this? If we can't, we then continue is in this cyclic setup of thinking more. And at some point when it determines that it's complete, it then finalizes and create like a final rating in this case of one to 10. And I think it's very important to understand that I'm using a long graph, which is like long chain, but with a graph setup and long graph, long chain, what it's doing is just simply allowing us to have this process of going through steps. And the LM, the AI component is then a connection to OpenAI's ChatGPT. I think I'm using for for mini in this case. So just keep it separate that long graph, long chains are these Python libraries allowing us to create this process very simply. But within each of these steps, we kind of have like functionality on their own. But just first to showcase it works, let's actually just run it. So just run it using Yubicon, and it's a fast ABI backend in this case, actually, just to make it simple. It's now running. I can then call slash evaluate, and I pass it the URL. In this case, I'm just going to evaluate my own little company, just to ensure we have the rights to crawl this website, and we're not going to really say anything good or bad about anyone else. But I will then again call this evaluate endpoint. It's then going to take a few seconds and it's going to go through the process of then first fetching the website, having one AI step analyze that website, determine do we have enough information to give a rating, and then continue more information to have enough information for rating and then the end of rating. So we get this information of we have the URL, I have a one line descriptor, I have the AI kind of thinking about market trends. It then gave a rating in this case, so 8 out of 10. I think that's pretty good. And it then came up with a final answer summary, kind of like explaining why it came up with this rating. We then have a bit more insight into some of the steps. So, for example, we can see that it at some point found enough, that it had enough information to do a rating. It went through three iterations of these thinking processes. And some of the thoughts along the way is also highlighted here. So then I actually have a bit of a close look at the code. It's relatively simple in that we first have a, well, we have a fast API just to have a backend endpoint. We then have a ChatGPT connection. And worth mentioning, I have inside my environment file a key to connect to ChatGPT. I'm not going to show it here in this video, but if you wanted to run this on your own, you would need your own OpenAI key. And it would automatically just load it from the ENV. And you're able to run it. We then have a helper method, which just takes the URL using beautiful soup, scrapes the website, and kind of turns it into text. And this is then used in step one, where in step one, we then again, important we have this state class, we then pass along all the steps, which then at first is just going to contain the URL and well enough, rather we have enough information but we're then slowly populating and then reusing this state step. So the idea of this kind of like agent is that we have these multiple steps and we're then building and passing along a state variable, then allowing these steps to kind of improve and, and get better and actually utilize some of the outputs from previous steps. But as mentioned, just in step one, we have the step descriptor, which takes the state. It then extracts URL and then utilizes our Fetch website content, 
space on this content, it is then just shorten it so we only get the first thousand shards if there's too much content. And then we create a prompt to ChatGPT. And in this case, we just want a one line descriptor of that website. We're going to make it shorter. We then have our step two decision where it just determines do we have enough information or have we been through more than three iterations? Because it could, in theory, be kind of stuck in this loop forever and it would just be expensive from the point of compute in that point. So we're doing three iterations at max. And we then also ask again, ChatGPT, do you have enough information? Yes or no. So in the case we probably just ran, it probably did not think it had enough information, but it was just capped on the three iterations. And right now, again, this is pretty much a closed loop, but it could also be interesting to actually have some of these steps be able to call either other websites, do their own market research, call other APIs or so on. So in that sense, you kind of have these steps evolve a bit more. And we then have our think step, which is pretty simple. Again, it also adds an iteration actually. So we are not gonna get too many iterations, but it is then gonna prompt this information. And again, get more information. We, we're running through multiple steps. I'm not gonna go all of this line by line, but you can have a look at it on GitHub if you want to. More. And then the point is that in the end, we have then been through multiple iteration. It, it, it evolves, it has, decided that it had enough information or it did not have enough information and went to the step like more, went through a bunch of prompts to get a bit more information. And then in the end, we then take all our state information, our descriptors, our thoughts, our market trends, and then force it to give us a rating. So again, to summarize, step one, connect to the website, Basic one line descriptor. Is that one line descriptor not enough? It's probably not. Then add a bunch more information in this, in this think more step. And for now, we're kind of capping it so it's not going to be running like infinite amount of times. But in theory, you could have it run multiple times. And then at the end, finalize, summarize based on our information. And what then from like a long graph makes all of this very simple is that we're just creating these steps as functions in Python. And we then simply have this graph filter provided by line graph, simply add all these steps, and we then tell it or showcase the path of how things happen. So starting, go to step descriptor. From the step descriptor, go to step decision. Then based on the step decision, use a decision router. So check if the step decision decided if it had more, if it had enough information, then either go to finalize or think more. And if we have hit think more, then go back to the step decision. And then we have this kind of like cyclic loop. And then in the end, hit finalize if the decision router determines that we have enough information, which is then either based on enough iterations or based on simply having enough information. And then in the end on the step finalize, we then simply return this information. And we then simply here just return the result, results of everything. So that is very much the general idea of an AI agent, this process of building functions in Python that have like one functionality more or less each, and then creating a graph in this case, showcasing how we can then iterate through all of these steps. And just worth mentioning, I'm using long graph to have these like more iterative multiple steps. You can also use long chain, which at least as far as I understand is the same company, but the difference would be that long chain is kind of like a chain. So it's like one step after each other. Well, and graph here allow us to do these like multiple iterations. But then again, if you're doing multiple iterations, I would highly ensure to have some kind of like caps. You don't end up having these steps run like, I don't know, 10,000, 100,000 times. And as we see here, I have added a public GitHub repository where you can go and have a look at everything I just went through and you can try it yourself. But that is very much what I want to show you today. I think it's very interesting looking at these like AI agents and using some of these libraries like Long Graph in this case, to be able to kind of streamline the process of utilizing these LLM functions, these kind of like smart functions. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful 